Across the infinite stretches of the Milky Way, untold danger lurks in every star system. In this celestial void, a confederation of brave space adventurers have joined together to keep the galaxy safe from the forces of tyranny and subjugation. Join us for the interstellar adventures of the most daring of these galactic defenders of freedom, Captain Comet Fire of the Cosmo Corps! While the boundaries of time are uncrossable by even the bravest space adventurer, there is one place where the past can become the present. And inside the mind of Captain Cometfire, the past is not always a welcome guest. Ginny, get your ship out of there! There's too many of them! We can hold them! Cosmocore, retreat, retreat! We can't get to you! Ginny, you need to pull out! I'm not losing this system! Cosmocore, get out of there! That is an order! We need every ship to rally to Proxima 4. Ginny, we need to go. You heard the order. Luna, don't you quit on me. I'm sorry. Luna! (sighs) Bark, bark, wolf, bark. I think you made a rounding error there, Roxy. That doesn't seem to have enough decibels. Bark, wolf. Oh, yeah, that would multiply out to a whole number. Sorry, girl. Wolf. Oh, Captain. At ease, Kenny. Everything okay, ma'am? You're not normally up this early. Which you could only know if you are normally up this early. When did that start? Nifty nebulas. I've been up for the last hour or so. I always do my best to get a full night's sleep, but I can get a lot of work done if I'm up before the rest of the crew. What's the project today? I'm working on creating a new element with a super large nucleus. And what would that do? It's not always easy to predict a new element's physical properties. Obviously, it would be very heavy. It could make a more effective shielding for all kinds of stuff. Bark, woof, woof, bark. Well, yes, if it conducts electricity at all, it would probably be pretty good for that. But something with this big of nucleus might have too much electromagnetic attraction to... Okay. Sorry, Kenny, but I have not had enough sleep for this much particle physics. Nifty nebulas, Captain. Sorry. You could always go back to bed, you know. If you'll forgive me, you kind of look like you need it. You're definitely right about that, Kenny. But I'm afraid there's no sleep in my immediate future. Why not? Because I suffer from a condition you're a little too young to have to deal with just yet. Oh? What's that? I believe the doctors call it regret. Oh. Do you want to talk about it? Not really, but sometimes not talking about it feels like I'm hiding from it. I came into the Cosmo Corps with a woman named Ginny Icelight. She and I were the only humans in our class at the Academy, though I was from Earth and Ginny was originally from the colonies on Sirius 3. Sirius Three? Weren't those... Destroyed. Yes. I was there. It was close to the end of the Android Wars. The swarm ships came and blew the atmosphere domes wide open. Ginny and I were the only two ships from the Corps against over 200 Android-piloted Mark VII eggshells. Our ships were faster, our weapons were more accurate and more powerful, but against those kinds of numbers... I don't even know if we had enough energy to fire our weapons that many times. The order came in to abandon the rescue mission and regroup with the Corps to begin the counter-assault. Boy, it must have been hard for your friend to abandon her home colony. Not just hard. She couldn't do it. The odds were impossible. More than impossible. But she just wouldn't give up. The last thing I heard from my best friend was her begging me not to give up. Nifty Nebulas, I'm so sorry. Bark, bark. Woof, woof. Whine. I appreciate that. From both of you. But life goes on, ready or not. For now I need to get myself ready for Admiral Brayforth, which means no small amount of coffee. Golly, I forgot that was today. Do you think the Geminites will sign the treaty? It's looking better than it has for the past dozen years or so. I'm just hoping I can stay awake. Appreciate you fine folks coming all this way. 
We should rendezvous with the Quasar's art in just a few minutes. Thank you, Commander Darkmoon. It has been very informative to see the capabilities of the SIPs in the Cosmo Horse Fleet. What's the point of an uneventful escort mission if you can't show off a little? Ha, <laughs> quite. Although the Demonite Armada hardly requires an escort, no force on this side of the galaxy could stand before our combined might, wouldn't you say? Hmm? Oh, uh, sorry. Had some readings here which I don't quite understand. Uh, some of these asteroids don't seem to be where they should be. Never trusted asteroid map and technology myself. You need to navigate those fields by feel, if you ask me. Sure. Sure. Just let me, uh, send a probe out to get a better look. You should probably reduce speed until I hear back, if you don't mind. But surely that's not necessary. It's only... I'm sorry, Captain. There's no possible doubt. A grav cluster mine? Where would you even dig one of those up? It's a good question. The mines were only used broadly in the last battle of the Android Wars. They were our Trojan horse. The weapon you can only use once. It's an extremely effective weapon against a swarm of poorly constructed ships. But if the androids had had a chance to regroup and redesign their fleet, the mines would have been easy enough to counter. Honestly, every fleet that's been constructed since then has made them obsolete. Exactly. Even planted in among the asteroids, they would have likely seriously damaged no more than 50% of the Geminite fleet. Not that damage like that is anything to sneeze at. The question becomes who planted them and why. It seems most likely that this was meant to stall the treaty between the Corps and the Geminites. Sure, but who benefits from that? The heaviest resistance came from the independence movement within the Geminites, and they would never attack their own people. There's no major trade rivals in that sector of space. If anything, a less hardline insularity is in most people's best interest. Perhaps the Corps was the intended target. Then why set the attack so that only one of our ships was anywhere near it? No, that doesn't make sense either. I wonder if someone was out after Josh specifically. Destroying a whole asteroid field for a little old me? I'd be flattered if it were true. You found something, Commander Darkmoon? Not me, no. Captain, you've got a visitor in about one minute before they get here. Commodore Homfell is here from Fleet Command. Why am I just finding out about this now? Probably because Commodore Homfell is one of the only people who would say, Don't tell anyone I'm on the way, and have it stick. I hope I've gotten your attention, Commodore. If your escort pilot was good, I don't expect a lot of damage. But I wanted to be clear. I don't care who else gets hurt. I'm coming for you. You ordered the Corps to give up on my home, and you let an entire planet be slaughtered. These attacks will continue, and I will murder my way through the Cosmo Corps until I kill you. If you want to save lives, then you and my old friend Luna Cometfire need to come to the coordinates I've encrypted on this message beacon. Bring one ship and come with your shields down. You have two Earth days to comply, or everyone who dies from that point on will be on your hands. Of course, by now, I'm sure you're used to that. The cyborg enhancements don't look all that new. There was some indication the androids were implanting any prisoners they caught in the last days of the war. I don't know what those would have done to her mind, but... If you think it will be easier for me to do this because my friend might have been brainwashed, just don't bother, Commodore. What are your thoughts on how credible her threats are? Does she have the determination to come after us until her dying breath? Absolutely. It's a question of her resources. She was one of the best pilots I ever met, and she knows Cosmo Core protocol like the back of her hand. Even if all she has is a ship and a handful of charges on a strafer cannon, she's a serious threat. I more or less thought the same thing. Now, Captain, I can't order you to get on board my Star Splicer with me, but... Understood. Commander Stellashine. Captain? I'm giving you command of the Quasar's heart. The Corps will need to assess how long you stay in that position, but before we go, I'll share my recommendation that it become a permanent position. Captain, 
You're not going you to- You not only heard my orders, Commander, you're also a psychic. You know what I'm going to do. Now are you accepting the command post? Commander Darkmoon has seniority. He should- Josh, any issues with taking orders from Commander Stellashine? Wouldn't have it any other way, Captain. That's what I thought. But- We're in the middle of signing a treaty, Princess. You really want me in charge during a diplomatic mission? Please don't call me Princess. Then stop acting like one. Commander, either accept the command of this ship or resign your post. I know you don't think you're ready for this, but I'm afraid I don't have time to argue about it. Command accepted, Captain. Very good. You're the best possible person for this position, and don't you ever doubt that. That's my last order to you. Now, Commodore, where are we headed? It's in orbit around a small moon of Tantor-12. You know it? It used to be a recruitment station. It's where Ginny and I first met. Departure in 30 minutes? I know it's not a lot of time, but... No time like the present. All right. Give me the room, please. I've got a lot to do in the next 30 minutes. Captain, one thing. I really don't have time for goodbyes, Commander. Understood. I just thought I'd point out that the fastest route to Tantor-12 will take you right through the Wartan system. It does, doesn't it? Ollie, ollie, oxen free! Come on, Ginny. We're here and our shields are down. If we're going to do this, can we get it over with, please? I'm surprised you're in a hurry, Luna. We're commencing a tachyon scan of your ship. No tricks, no surprises. What is the point of this? She's making sure we're really on board the ship. Ruling out holograms and that sort of thing. Am I right? If you're trying to impress me by showing how well you know me, save your breath. It'll take a few minutes for us to get the scanning results. Am I allowed to know who us is? I'm here with the survivors of Sirius 3. There aren't many of us, and we're mostly machines these days. The androids were running out of spare parts, so they figured it would be easier to just install motor controls on the prisoners of war. If you hadn't fried the Central Hive intelligence, we'd probably still be under their control. Funny how you never came looking for us. We fried the intelligence, remember? Salvaging data wasn't an option, and we had no way to know you were still out there. Ginny, if I thought there was any chance you were still alive, I'd have moved heaven and earth to reach you. But if you've gotten to the point you have a functional base, scanning equipment, and at least one grav cluster mine, you could have sent a distress signal a long time ago. Sirius 3 sent a distress call the day our atmosphere domes were destroyed. No one came. Now, we don't want a rescue. We want justice from the traitors who abandoned us. But look at it this way. At least you won't spend another sleepless night wrestling with your guilty conscience. I've lost a lot of sleep over the years, Lieutenant Icelight. None of it was over Sirius 3. I don't know what you think command is, but in my position, it was always a math problem I never wanted to do. Do I sacrifice 20 ships to save the fleet? Do I let 50 people die to save a thousand? If I send 10 more ships into this battle, will it make a difference, or will I just lose 10 more ships? You want to know what keeps me up at night, Icelight? It's the times I got the math wrong, when more people died than had to. I know you don't want to hear this, but I made the right call at Sirius 3. Two ships against hundreds, and no way to get reinforcements to you for hours. The colony couldn't be saved. It was impossible. The best I could do was to save the two ships, and I only managed to do half of that. You want to punish me for that call? That's fine. But if you're looking for some kind of moral victory here, you're not getting one. Very tidy justification. It changes nothing. We really didn't expect it to. Ginny, I know you hate me right now. I'm not even sure you shouldn't. But if you ever thought of me as a friend, then please believe me when I tell you the Commodore and I made the best choices we could given the situation. Sometimes, though, the best we can do is still a tragedy. You always were an optimist, Luna. And if it makes a difference... I'm sort of glad you can lie to yourself and say you're dying with a clean conscience. I'm not the bad guy here. I'm just the one holding you accountable. I think where we disagree is that there is a bad guy here. 
sounds like the tachyon scan is done. I'm guessing there's no other way this ends? It'll be over quickly. Yes, it will. What the- You missed a lot in the past few years, Jenny. You know how we used to think cloaking technology would never work on ships with an antimatter drive? Please allow me to introduce the Wartans. I led the mission to repopulate their planet when their sun was fixing to expand into a nova. All weapon systems are suppressed, Captain Cometrier. Thank you. Jenny, I'm going to suggest you have your people evacuate the weapons controls. The dampening field shouldn't affect cybernetics, but better safe than sorry. We're sending down our security teams. As you requested, all weaponry is set to neural disruption only. You're arresting us? You're an active threat to the Cosmo Corps. But let's be clear, it's the Wartans who are taking you into custody. Your people have a right to be heard, and the Wartans will help you file your grievances with the Interstellar Tribunals. I stand by my actions in the Android Wars, but if those courts believe I have done something wrong, I will abide by their judgment. We encourage you to come peacefully. Our scans indicate we have you outnumbered, and your small arms will be inoperable. Lethal force will only be administered as a last resort. Luna, I swear you'll pay for this. One day you will pay for this. Like I said, sometimes the best available option is still a tragedy. You're not resuming command, Captain? Not at the moment. I'm taking a leave of absence for a while. I want to see if there's a way to help the Sirius Three factions, and... Ginny, in particular. Maybe that bridge can't be rebuilt, but... Well, I have to try. You took an awful risk heading down there with no shields. They could have just opened fire and destroyed your ship the moment you showed up. That wasn't going to happen. Ginny and the rest of the survivors were out for what they thought of as justice. Nobody seeks that kind of justice without first justifying themselves. Nifty nebulas. I can't imagine how hard that must have been for you. Kenny, I'm going to tell you a secret about being a member of the Cosmo Corps. You focus on the mission at hand, and you make the best decisions you can at the time. If I'd gone into that situation regretting all my choices from the past, I'd have fallen apart. As it was, my job was just to keep her talking until the Wartans could finish their scans and set up the dampening field. That was the mission at hand. Bark, bark, bark. What's Roxy saying? She wants to know, what about after the mission? Ah, that's a little trickier. Hindsight can sometimes be helpful in letting you make a better choice. But in my experience, it's mostly designed to cause insomnia. What about you? How is the supersized atom coming along? I thought I had it, but it's just not stable. It would only exist for a fraction of a second before splitting apart. You'd need a containment field and, well, it's just too much energy for how little it would be worth it. Woof, woof, woof. If she's saying what I think she's saying, she's right. It sounds a lot like war. And so once again, the call of adventure reaches out across the galaxy and our heroes are only too willing to answer it. Join us next time for another thrilling adventure of Captain Comet Fire of the Cosmo Corps! You have been listening to Captain Comet Fire of the Cosmo Corps, Episode 2, produced by Seat of Our Pants Players, written and directed by Dan Wenzel. The announcer was Dan Wenzel. Captain Comet Fire was Rebecca Scheimer. Ginny Icelight was Brianna Kuby. Commodore Humfell was Liz Music. Kenny Cosmoid was Aaron Manka White. Roxy the Robohound was Joe Wenzel. Commander Darkmoon was Adam Gastingy. Admiral Brayforth was Dana Bonner Andreessen. Commander Stellashine was Andy Gastingy. And the Wartan Commander was Andrew Dell. Some music and sound effects by www.freesfx.co.uk. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you later.